Well, in six hours time, I'm meant to be setting off for Manchester Airport. We're on our way to the Iberian Masters in Spain. But as you can see, the forecast storm has already hit us. I've got to go over the Pennines, over to Manchester from Sheffield. Certainly two routes are going to be blocked now. See if it eases up. Maybe try and get a bit of grit down and just see if we can go. Or I'm just going to have a look at the main road now. and We're going to have to make a decision whether we're going to set off now. But to be honest, it's bad already. It's very touch and go at the moment. The edge of the main road, and as you can see, it's not brilliant. It's only just started. I was going to put some grit down. This is the nearest grit bin to us. But as you can see, there's not a lot in there unless you want an empty can of Foster's. I think it's decision time. We're going to have a quick look at the forecast, see if it's going to continue coming. If it is, I think we're going to have to set off six hours early just to make sure we can get over to the airport. Not the very best of starts. As you can see, it's still coming down. It's just coming up to nine o'clock at night. We're meant to be leaving at 3 a.m. I can't just sit in the house and hope it's going to get better. So I'm going to wax, wax some grit down. I've done this for years, ever since I was a kid, because it's always been bad here where I live, but we've got the shovel, going to get some grit down, that's all I can do. Can't do any harm, but I've certainly got to do my best. Again, that should give us a fighting chance. Well, we crept down the hill, took a chance, and we got down onto the main road now, and as you can see, it's pretty much clear. We've only travelled a mile, so hopefully that's going to be the worst part of the journey, but we're going north now, and that's where the worst snow's been, so we've got plenty of time. Time's on our hands. Fingers crossed, we're going to get there. Well, we've done it, it's a little bit chaotic but we're here, that's the main thing, we're four and a half hours early, we're just going to get the van checked in, hopefully get ourselves to the airport, it's just coming up to midnight but we've got a long wait but the main thing is we've got here. Well, we've just heard that there's loads of flights cancelled just due to the weather, there's a backlog of vehicles here now so we can't get to the airport yet but at least we've got this far so time for a coffee, a bit of a chill out. So just having a coffee, just check the status. Uh, easy jet. Says the flight's on time. They're gonna get us there to the airport early. Fantastic service. Yeah, yeah that's it. Trolley. I've never had this before. Insert coins here, insert money, turn and face trolley bank, wait for green light. Okay then. Green light. Pull handle down. Look at that. The system works. It's a long time since I've been in an airport as quiet as this. Deserted. We can't check in for another three hours, but. It's nice and warm, there's a coffee machine, and we're here, that's the main thing. Well, I've been awake 24 hours now, so just in a bit to keep myself awake. I've got about another hour or so before we can actually board our flight. I'm still at Manchester Airport. The schedule for the next few days is basically, we're going to land just after lunchtime at Alicante. Got to go and pick up the hire car. We've then got a, a drive up towards the venue, going up towards um, Valencia. That's where we're gonna check into the hotel. First thing I'm gonna do once I've done that is check my kit, just to make sure that the three bags that have been in the hold on the plane have not got damaged in any, any way, because if there are any damages to my kit or anything, it just gives me a, a few hours just to kind of repair it or try and find replacements for it. Thursday is then the official training day, so I'll get down on the bank, have a full session, just kind of get a feel for the venue. Phil Ringer, Rob Wooten, I think Tom Pickering's already out here, out here, so I'm going to be feeding off them, just kind of get a bit of information about how the venue's fishing and what kind of fish they've been catching. So I'll train on Thursday and then the competition days are Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
it's a points competition but I think there is a, an additional prize for, for the biggest fish which I think Will Freeman may have won last year and that's an additional 250 euros which would be nice but that's it like I say the flight's on time so hopefully we're not going to get any more delays just glad we got out of Sheffield you know it's a bit of a testing start to the trip and uh, let's just hope that was the toughest part of the trip so I'm going to go and grab another coffee try and stay awake I just can't wait to get to Spain now On behalf of the captain and the crew, it has been our pleasure looking after you today. Well, we thought the snow was going to be the worst part of the trip. We've just got to Alicante. The carousel has finished. All three of my kit bags are still in Manchester. Not impressed. Well, they've confirmed all three bags are still in Manchester. That's all my kit, pretty much. I've only got my clothes in this carry-on bag. So they said that well, it should be on the flight this time tomorrow morning. So they're taking all my details, hotel, mobile number. They're going to give me a call as soon as it comes in tomorrow. Hopefully it's going to be on that flight. So that means tomorrow's training day is out the window. So it'll just be a day of kind of skulking around the venue, waiting for a phone call. Hopefully I'm going to get it tomorrow. So it's going to be in time for the competition. So I'm just going to go and get a high car. And hopefully there's not going to be any problems at that hurdle. My well, car hire seems to have gone alright, they've actually upgraded to a better vehicle which is nice, it's just a shame there's no fishy tattle to go in it. I've just had a text message while I've been there that they've actually located the luggage. I'm just going to double check with EasyJet that it's not been located here. If it is then obviously I can take it with us, if not it's still in Manchester, I'm going to have to wait for it for tomorrow. No, well, sadly that was just confirmation that it has been located but it's actually in Manchester so I'm just going to go and get the hire car, get ourselves over to Valencia, get settled in, checked into the hotel and and just wait for a phone call. Hopefully I'm going to get it back tomorrow so I can at least compete Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Base 648 we're after. Six four eight. There's the baby. This is Thursday, this is the official training day and as you can see, I'm still in the hotel. It's quarter past 10 in the morning, my kit still hasn't turned up, I've been promised by EasyJet that my tattle is going to be on the same flight that we got in here yesterday, which means it should be landing in about 15 minutes. I've been hounding the airline with emails, with text messages and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give it until about quarter to 11, if I haven't heard anything, I'm going to start ringing them just to find out if my kit is on that flight. Just behind me are the mountains. They've only just gone out of sight. This low level cloud's just moved in and as you can see, it's really an overcast day. Whether that's gonna affect the fishing or not, I don't know, but like I say, this is training day. I should be on the bank and I'm not. I've gotta say the lads have been brilliant, especially Lee Kerry, but Phil Ringer, Rob Warren, Jeremy, fellow Matrix angler from France, and Jose from Portugal, they've all offered to lend me kit for this competition if my kit doesn't turn up. So, so that's fantastic to hear that, you know, but obviously that's not the ideal scenario. I'm incredibly grateful to them offering for me to borrow some of their kit, but I need to get that tattle back. That flight's going to land in about 10 minutes' time, so as soon as that happens, I'm going to start hounding the airline and just keep calling them just to find out if my kit's on that flight. If it is on that flight, then obviously I'll take that to the next step. If it's not, I've then got to look at the other alternatives. Well, even though I haven't been on the bank fishing, obviously I've been in touch with how the venue's fishing, you know, just trying to pull as much information as I can. It's fishing hard in areas. There were some fish caught yesterday. All the lads that I spoke to across, all the European lads, including the English lads, obviously, the average number of fish was about four or five. That's all it was, not a great deal of fish. I've heard 
that you know a lot of the fish have been caught short some have been caught in the middle and some have been caught across and there are better sectors than others I'm only really going to find this out once I get down on the venue but the actual um, approach and the methods and the bait seems to be the same all the way through the match length but if not if I get my kit late all I'm really going to do is I'm going to go down to the venue have a quick look without my tackle and then come back nice and early start assembling all my seat box and all that sort of stuff I'll show you the kit that I've brought along with me and just kind of make sure that's 100% ready for tomorrow and then just kind of read my you know my peg and my section once I draw it and get to it it's all carp fishing there's been a lot of lost fish in snags so they're going to be incredibly important over the next three days I'm sure lost fish are going to be costing people lots of points and money obviously so that's it i've just kind of got to be in touch with what's happening on the venue but obviously i'm still waiting for a phone call from the airline so i'm going to have a look down at the venue i've heard it's not far from here rob Wharton's kindly pinpointed it on the map for me so i'm going to take dad and have a drive down there just get a feel for the venue obviously all the lads will be down there practicing today so i'm going to get a good feel for how it's fishing i'll get to see everyone set up and how they're feeding and all that sort of stuff so whilst i'm not actually fishing i'm still going to be able to get some kind of a an impression of how the venue's fishing so tactics obviously i haven't fished the venue but i've been pulling information over the last few weeks and obviously i've learned a lot while i've been here because i've been speaking to all all the international lads i've just kind of got an idea about how it's fishing and more importantly where and what fish have been caught it became quite apparent last night that a lot of the fish have been caught short when i say short probably about 15 meters there are a lot of rocks close in hence the reason why i've brought only 13 foot or four meter rods that inside line could be very very important the key on that line by the sounds of it is the fish that are getting hooked there a lot of them are getting lost by the very nature they are there because of the snags and that's obviously an issue the kit i've packed of course i've brought along because i haven't got it yet is quite heavy it's very strong for that reason the fish that have been caught down the middle sound as though they've been smaller the odd carasio and smaller carp and the fish that have been caught across i've heard that not many fish have been lost that have been hooked across and when i say across i've been told to look for the bottom of the slope and up the slope if you've got some sort of a feature some of the pegs have got trees and features there so that's very important i think because the fish you know that have been caught over there haven't been you know a lot of people haven't lost those fish it's been those inside fish so that inside line is going to be very very important by the sounds of it now i don't know if that's the way the same all the way through all the sectors i don't know because i haven't been on the venue something to think about i don't think scaling down is going to make a difference i think lost fish are going to be very very important you know if you're hooking fish you've got to get them out every single fish counts so when i finally get on the bank that is going to be something that i need to work on if i do get an opportunity to fish today i don't think i'm going to spend much time in the middle and across i think it's going to be that short line that i need to focus on i.e i don't know what i'm going to feed there i've been told hemp and corn is good on that line but obviously sticky mags will be very very important and one thing i learned last night while we were having something to eat and speaking to the european lads is that some of the lads who caught well and when i say well i mean seven eight fish caught with ground bait and corn not sticky mag that could be key i've come here to fish both i'm prepared to fish sticky mag but i've also got ground bait with me and to fish a ground bait and corn approach so that sounds like that was very important yesterday as well so that that is the key detail that I need to work on and I think that inside line is something that I need to focus on if I can get on the bank. Well, that scheduled flight from Manchester should have landed an hour and 20 minutes ago. I know they've had loads more snow back in England, so I'm hoping that's not delayed the flight. I've had two emails telling me that they will contact me as soon as that flight lands. Either way, whether my kit's on it or not, I haven't heard a thing. Like I say, it should have landed an hour and 20 minutes ago. So all I'm doing now is just constantly ringing them now, just trying to get through to find out, you know, either way, whether the kit's on that flight or not. I bet it's one of those phone lines that they never ever pick up. There's a surprise, no answer. It's all been very official, all the claims and references and all that sort of business. It's not too good if you can't actually get through to speak to anybody, is it? And somebody picked up and just put the phone down then. Fifth time lucky. Hola, hola, 
hello? Hung up. Three times hung up on me. Doesn't look good. Another barrage of emails, I think. Well, I've just got a message after 11 emails from the airline. They've said, they haven't said that the luggage is there, but they've actually said that um, somebody's going to deliver it to our hotel. They said four o'clock. Now, whether that means that's four o'clock it's going to be delivered or four o'clock when it actually sets off from the airport, I don't know. So there's not a lot we can do at the minute. I'm just bombarding them with emails and messages. And um, we've just jumped in the car, me and my dad. We're just going to have a run down, down, try and find the venue and just see if the lads are catching before they pack up for the session. I'm pretty sure that route that the sat nav gave us is not the best way to get here, but it's brought us out at the venue. It says it's seven miles from the hotel. There's our first look at it. Yes, it's blowing, so you're gonna hear it on this speaker, but It's absolutely fantastic through everything that we've been through so far. It's just brilliant to see the venue. I'm not sure what sector the lads are in today because I haven't seen them this morning, just obviously because I've been sorting other things out. It's just great to finally see the venue. We just had a drive down through D sector. Jose is fishing there, he's had three carp, but that's about it. How about that for a backdrop? And the fish has just rose here. This is the end of D sector. And there's the weir. About as rural as you can possibly get. Still waiting on the kit, not had any more messages. It's, um, it's three o'clock now, 3 p.m. They've quoted four o'clock on the email, the last email, so I'm hoping that might be the time it gets delivered to a hotel. If not, even if that means what, that they're setting off from the hotel, uh, sorry, from the airport at four o'clock, I should get my kit by, you know, tea time. I don't really care what time it comes today, as long as I can get it. I'm gonna have a drive back up the match length now and just kind of get back to the hotel and just see if we've got any more messages. And I haven't even paid my money on yet to enter the competition. I won't, I'll be totally honest with you, I don't really, I don't really fancy fishing unless I've got my own kit. It's really kind of the lads to loan me some gear and stuff, but to compete in something like this, you really want your own kit, and I really need everything. I haven't got anything. I haven't even got hooks. Everything is in those three bags, so I'm gonna head back anyway, and hopefully the fortunes are gonna change. Not many fish being caught. Just coming to the end of the training session now. I'm just walking up to Lee, Kerry, and Tom. Um, one of the lads has got one on here. This is up in there. Top end of B section, I think it is. Wild fish, the two kilo fish are more. Two kilo fish are the most powerful ones we've heard. Lots of fish being lost on these rocks. There are a lot of ro rocks close in. This is on a big bend, as you can see. Wild angry carp. Fantastic. It's exciting fishing, you know. These are wild fish. They're using strong kit, big hooks. But a lot of guys are waiting a long time for bites, a long, long time. When you hook them, you've got to make sure you get them out, that's the key. And a time check with you, it's 4 pm, and I still haven't heard anything about my tackle. It is quarter past nine, the night before the competition. I've just been sat having a meal with Tom Pickering, Lee Kerry, Will Freeman. Tommy gets a phone call, tell Jamie his tattle's just turned up a reception. Game on. The kit's just arrived. I know a lot of you want to see the kit that I brought over for this. I'm going to do it now. It's 10 o'clock at night, just gone. I've got a good hour's worth of prep now just to make sure it's not damaged, try and get it set up for tomorrow. It could, could be a late night. Who cares, my kit's here. Keys would be good. This is the bulk of my kit in this bag. 1.3 meters long. Let's hope it's all in one piece. Okay, Matrix t-shirts. Ground bait bowl, collapsible bowls. Might be fishing sticky mag. Drop bucket. 
block the pegs you're high off the water that will allow me to get the water two three three bait balls hook lens I haven't lost any in training because I haven't been training so I shouldn't need to stop them up tonight atomizer sticky mag a couple of bags of ground bait should be enough bait tubs riddle for the sticky mag tips 25mm inserts, I've got the F25 box, all my attachments at home are on a 36 box, so I need the inserts. Screws for the box, keep net attachments. One box, six reels, all 5000s. Tie wraps, therefore the casting mat to tie to the mesh behind my peg. A rather large selection. The feeders, mainly horizons for the far, far line, always need bags for bait, feeding feeders, casting mat, more attachments, legs for the box, some more bait bags, waterproof bottoms, can't fish without them, bait brolly, new feeder arm, obviously with the 25mm insert. Another spare hoodie, great thing about clothing is it can be used as padding to protect some of your kit. And, wrapped in bubble wrap, I'd like to just rip off but I can't because I've got to think about getting it home. The F25, and the foot plate, that is everything in the main bag net bag this is the three net version so it obviously carries plenty of other stuff I'm only going to be using one keep net I have brought the four meter river keep net because it is a river and you're gonna be high off the water so you need that four meters to make sure there's gonna be some of it in the water if you're actually high up off the off the surface a bit of padding one bait tray, doesn't need any legs, that should be big enough for everything that I need. Box legs, always carry that just in case luggage gets damaged, anything, you've got some tape, you never know when you might need that on these trips. Feeder rest, large carp landing net, got the four meter net, and this baby, believe it or not, a lot of people did thought it couldn't be packed away into here, this believe it or not, is our new four rod ready rod bag 1.95 meters amazing how it packs away boom the only thing to unpack is the bazooka which has got four four meter horizons the new xds a couple of landing net handles obviously got a spare and some other bits and bobs and some sticky mag i won't unpack that in front of you purely because I've got to start prepping now and prep comes first. If I don't speak to you later, I'll see you half past six for breakfast in the morning. My kit finally turned up last night. I don't know what the sound's like in here, it's echoing a little bit. It had gone midnight by the time I kind of got all the kit out and just made sure it was all okay and got it packed into its right luggage. It's half past five in the morning. I'm just going down to the underground car park now to load the car up with the kit before breakfast. It's just great to have it all here. last night you don't need much for a match like this as long as I've made the right selections as regards feeders the first thing you've got to do when you're hiring cars like this is get some sort of a cover down my casting mat is perfect for that face down that keeps the upholstery nice and clean last thing you want to do is return your car after the event and end up getting stung with a 50 euro foreign for valeting I've got the feeder box the bait brolly the ready rod bag, that's got four rods in there. I've got three four meter rods set up in there and a feeding rod as well. 
I've got my three nets stink bag there. That's got everything in there. It's got some nets, and some feeders, all that sort of stuff. That's really been used as a carryover. It's got my nets in there as well. And then a ground bait bowl. That's the zip up one with the cover on it. It's got three ground bait bowls in there. A little bit of ground bait and a spare reel. The lights have gone off. I'm going up for breakfast. I'm absolutely starving. I've only had about three hours sleep. But who cares? Finally getting to fish it. draw I didn't film that but I mean I will film tomorrow and the day after possibly but just to give you a feel for it I've drawn I'm up in B8 B8 section everyone's got a lanyard they've even done one for dad that says father on it and companion which is brilliant so I'm gonna head up there now I know the lights rubbish but um, we've got 10 to 10 pre baiting then we're gonna fish 10 till 3 that's it simple as that most of my kits set up already I've got some bait I'll show you down that down at the bank so I'm just gonna work his way up along the river up to the peg First look at the peg. There we go, B8. There's the peg number. First impressions, no rocks or anything, no snags down here. By the looks of it, but we'll find out, won't we? But yeah, got quite a bit of time set up, but I just want to get down there, get something, get nice and comfy. Let's get some kit out. Two litres of white maggots, I think that might be the main thing to be fair. They've also been catching with corn. I might struggle because I've only got one tin. That should last me. <laughs> Easy setup, obviously. What more can you do with a set? You know, with a sort of approach. Probably going to fish two lines, I think. Probably going to fish a, a pole line. It's about 14, 15 meters. I'm not going to come closer than that, just based on what I saw yesterday, which wasn't much. And then I'm going to go across. Probably not too tight, but I'm going to have a cast across with a bomb, just kind of see what it's like over there. I don't know how wide it is. Probably 40 meters max. I'm going to have to stand up, get off my box, and stand right underneath the wall to cast. But we're not going to be it's like you know it's not like we're going to be casting every minute or two so it's not really an issue so i'm going to mix some bait up get the rods out and i'll talk you through the approach as soon as i'm set up well it's about 20 minutes before the off um i think i'm set up i've got, I've got to keep it simple as you know i've not spent any time on the venue other than just yesterday walking about and just got to make decisions based on the kit that i brought what and what i saw yesterday and what i heard from last year so Super, super simple setup. I'm going to fish two lines, I'm going to fish 13 metres, and I'm going to fish 39 metres. This place is probably about 42 to 43 metres wide. I've not gone right up to that other bank purely because it's so rocky. I've just come away from it a little bit at 39 metres. Obviously, I've still got the option to go past that. If I need to go into those rocks to chase fish later on, if I'm struggling or whatever, then obviously that's an option, but I'm going to start away just on the edge of them rocks where it's, it is quite clean, actually. It's a little bit deeper than I thought, but, you know, it's uh, it, that's where I'm going to start. I've got a line at 13 metres, purely because I didn't see many fish caught shorter than that yesterday. Um, I think one lad had one good fish, but that was literally, I think that was after match hours anyway, so I don't want to feed too short. Um, but 30 meters is obviously a long pole range, so um, I'm just covering my options there. I'm not going to go down the middle purely because that 30 meter line is just kind of obviously it's not far from the middle anyway, and I don't want to overcomplicate it with three lines. I've got two four meter XD set up. I've got the 100 gram version for a cross because I know it's clear, clear out there. So that's the four, and I've also got a four meter, but the 130 gram version. That's for my 30 meter line. That is because I've heard there's a lot of fish has just topped. Not a big fish, I don't know if they're a little carassio, but I've learned, heard there's a lot of bleak in the river as well this year. <clears throat> I've got the 130 gram version purely because I've heard there are rocks close in here and it's a four metre rod, so if I do hook any fish on that short line, I'll be able to stand up and just get that line as high up away from the, any rocks. I can't see any rocks, but I don't want to take any chances. And that's it really, the other rod is a feeding rod. That's just the Fox Warrior that I usually use, and that is just for... Um, boshing that 30 meter line if I want to I'm not going to bosh it at the, st at the start but it's going to be an option um, for later on in the session if I need to go down that avenue I am going to feed that 30 meter line but not with a massive amount of bait I've got some white maggots I've got some live ones in here as you can see I've got some ground bait mixed up which is just pro natural bream it's a nice sweet brasmy mix 
I just thought that might be right. It's obviously a cereal mix. I haven't heard anything about the types of mixers that they use over here when they do catch on ground bait. So I've had to make a decision. And as you know, I couldn't bring a lot of it with me anyway, just purely because of the restrictions with the flight luggage. And um, corn, obviously. I've only got one, kin, one tin, but it's nearly as big as the car. And some sticky mag. And that's, you know, probably the main option. I'm going to be using that in a Horizon feeder. Um, I might need a 40 gram, but a 30 gram version would probably be best. And obviously I can use the same feeder if I want to start capping um, corn and maggot with ground bait as well. So that's it. We'll start across. We get a 10 minute pre-baiting. We'll be fishing 10 till 3. Pre-baiting is 10 to 3. There'll be a signal for that. And then the next signal will be start of the match. And then five minutes from the end there'll be another signal which tells you that obviously there's five minutes left. Fish have got to be out of the water by the end of the match. So even if they're in the landing net, you've still got to, the net's got to be out of the water, clear of the water for it to count. Bang on the whistle. It's not like rules back home where you get 50 minutes to play any fish. That's it. I'm start quite heavy, probably 017, 019 hook length. I think I'm just about to take a look at them now. May start on a 12. A nice positive hook. Load it up with maggots and just see what's out there. If I scale down to a 14. I can try that obviously, I don't even know if that's an option, I don't know if it makes any difference. Sticks, I know you're probably going to be interested, I've had to make up a shorter one, purely because it's not very wide here, and I'm using my hold all as a buffer. There's the new casting mat, not really that necessary on this paper because my rod's going to be going up and over onto the road, that you can see there. So the hook lens shouldn't get damaged there, but that's just really to protect my rod. If I go back a little bit too far, it's not going to be hitting these rocks. So that means my sticks, I've just made a two metre piece of rope up because obviously I've only got two metres to play with here because the bank's narrow, simples. sunny Spain but five minutes before pre-baiting we just walked down with a packed lunch every competitor gets a packed lunch got a sandwich in there a donut fantastic they've even sorted dad out with a pass and everything so obviously he's staying in the same hotel and everything um, yeah they really looked after him he's actually got um, I'll show you in a bit his lanyard's got a little um, father companion head coach and start across and I think it's gonna be very important today I'm in a very good position where I can see what's happening left and right there are one, two, three, four anglers to my right, and then a massive great big gap where there are two bridges. So we probably expect that MPEG to fish well, but I can see all those anglers, and I can see about eight anglers up to my left before it goes around a bend. So yeah, I'll be able to see what's happening around me, and just make decisions from there. And the other bit of kit that I should mention, because I know a lot of you are interested, especially the lads in the UK, I know that you're interested about what kind of kit we use when you go abroad. Obviously, we fish a lot of commercials in England, two and three metre landing net handles. This is when our five and a half metre landing net handle comes in handy. You can see how far away from the water I am. You're not allowed to get in the water, that's part of the rules. Um, and obviously where I am here, I can cast with this wall because my rod's going behind it. So that five and a half metre landing net is spot on for venues like this.
it was only about one and a half kilo maybe. I don't think don't think it was four. Uh, two kilo. We were 49 minutes in and I've just had one. It's only about one and a half kilo, not a big fish, but I've got heavy gear and I could have given it more stick, but I just wanted to make sure I got it in the net. There's only one fish caught to my right, I think, about three pegs down. The lad on my left has got one, about the same size as mine. And then three pegs past him, he's got two. So it's all right, still in it. Still in the first hour. Good confidence boost because I caught on the line without, on this line without having to go right into the rocks. I'm getting tiny indications now. I've been told there are a lot of bleak in the river this year. I haven't caught any bleak. And the bait isn't really getting smashed either. So whether they are bleak or whether they're just fish, you know, around the feeder and the little liners, I don't know. But the fish that I got, there was no mistake in the bite. It was just, it was, it was just on. Just gonna stick at what I'm doing. Just keep my eye on what's happening. One hour 40 minutes in, just had a second fish. Long time without an indication. I had a quick look on my 30 metre line, I had four casts on there, just had a few little rattles, I think they may have been bleak. So I topped it up again and just left it, gone back out long. I thought the rest might have worked, and it hasn't. I went back on it, it was probably four casts before I had a, you know, the fish, and it nearly pulled the rod in. No messing at all, best, best bite today, it was just, it was on. But I had to sit and wait for it. I was hoping I was going to be able to try and just trigger bites, just try and find a way of making bites happen, but I've not done that yet. I'm getting the odd indication from a bleak. I've just caught a bleak on six white maggots. I'm getting the odd flicker now. A lot of the lads have come short now. The lads around me, everybody else I've seen here have, have fished a, they fed a line at three quarters and in the middle, or as well as the middle. I'm the only one who hasn't fed that area. All them around me now have dropped shorter now onto that line, but I've not seen anyone catch on it yet. Well, two and a half hours in and it's just it's just completely dead nobody's catching not getting any signs nothing not had anything not a sign since that second fish i've been on both lines it's just nothing i am seeing seen a fish caught to my left for an hour and a half maybe and down to my right no one's caught one down there until you get to the end peg which is four or five pegs down i've heard he's catching one or two fish but you know we hear that the end pegs do dominate on here anyway I don't feel like I've triggered a bite or anything, just created anything. I think it's just pick a line, sit on it and have some confidence that it's going to go around. And I don't like that. So two and a half hours in, I'm going to stay on that long line because it's the only line where I've caught. And just keep trying that 30 metre line in spells. Just kind of top it up, rest it and then go on it and just see if I can nick a fish that way. Hey, I know, wild, aren't they? No, not quite that. Good fish, though. Just to get a number three.
Well, I can't lie, I'm incredibly disappointed. Um, I think he's had 16 kilo on the MPEG, which is what they expected, you know. Um, and then I think second in the section might be Jeremy from France, the other Matrix angler. He's further up there, but he's had one really big fish. They've got him down a second, but I think I think there's a bit of a dispute regarding the fish. I think somebody says it may have strayed out of his out of his peg. So whether that result will stand or not, I don't know. And however they're going to investigate it, I don't know. Um, so I think I think my five kilo eight hundred and something might be fourth if I'm lucky. If not, it might be fifth. It's probably put me out of it. I think I don't know. I don't know. That last fish, I've lost a fish with three minutes to go. So frustrating, I can't believe it on my short line. It's just virtually pulled the rod in. I've fished for a big fish on that line, or expecting a big fish. And with, I've hooked it with six minutes to go. Played it for a minute, I've got it, you know, eight, six, eight, eight meters out, something like that. The, the hoot has gone for, for the five minute signal. I've set my stopwatch, so I know exactly I've got five minutes to land the fish, and about a minute and a half into that. The fish is bouncing all over like they do on here and, and, it, and the hook's just pulled out. So frustrating, so disappointing. But that's it. Lots of people have lost fish the last few days. Hopefully that's going to be the last one I lose. I just don't like and I don't usually lose fish. I don't. Took my time with it. Um, but anyway, that's it. So 5 kilos, 800. I'm hoping, I think it's going to be fourth at best. Hopefully that's not going to put me out of it, but we'll find out. So I'm going to get packed up. As you can see, it's raining now. I'm just packing my kit away so I don't have to touch it again when I get back. I've got some up lens to do in the hotel tonight. I've lost a few today on a couple of snags and stuff. So that's it. I'm going to get packed away. Go and get some food. I'm starving. And find out how the rest of the lads have got on. Well, it's the morning of day two. Feeling very tired. Probably the first night's proper sleep that I had last night. So it's quarter to seven. We've just had some breakfast. The draw is half past seven again, so just gonna get my last bits and bobs. The results are up from yesterday. I ended up fourth in the section, which to be honest, coming away from the bank, I was kind of pleased with, because I thought it was gonna be worse than that. I lost a fish with three minutes to go, which has probably cost me a point. I don't think it would have got me second in the zone, so that's cost me a point. Really annoyed about that, because I just, I just don't lose fish like that, but the hook's pulled out. But having spoke to other anglers, everybody all the way through the through the zone has lost fish on snags and, and all that sort of stuff so just got to check it off and just just roll with it so that's put me in 15th place overall out of 50 anglers uh, one of the same points as Lee Kerry but Lee's got an advantage over me with weight I think he weighed eight kilo to my five eight hundred wherever it was so hopefully I like to think I'm still kind of in contention so only two more good results section wins seconds whatever wherever I can get it's incredibly windy out there I can't really show you out there because it's still dark but it's really windy the trees are blowing so that's going to affect things especially fishing that far bank line that's it I'm going to go and draw it's a random draw the one rule as regards the drawing is people who draw end pegs like for example the lads that were on end pegs yesterday cannot draw another end peg today other than that it's a complete random draw so I could draw the same peg that I was on yesterday or and so could anyone else really so it's just a complete random draw so I'm going to get my last bits of kit together, I had to tie some more uplands last night, I'm going to grab them, shoot off down to the car, get up to the draw. Right in front of where the draw is, is the river. Get that. This is a stretch where they hold what they call the match fishing stretch, basically float fishing. A lot of pole fishing on here, um, some bolo fishing as well. Some good weights on here yesterday. It's a little bit narrower as you can see and because of that, or well, part of the reason because of that, it flows a little bit more than it is up where we are, where it's wider. So yeah, that's the float fishing side of this competition in the car 
I've only ordered another litre for today so I've got quite a bit left over from yesterday. They've got the flags flying and I'm deliberately doing this so you can probably hear the wind, hear the wind on the speaker. It's going to have an impact on that long line today. It'll certainly be testing the accuracy of some anglers. Just need a good peg now, that's all. Well, so there's nothing to shout about. I'm on at peg. C6. That is where Lee Kerry, I think Lee Kerry was on C5 yesterday. He had four points like me yesterday with eight kilo. And then two pegs to his left was Will Freeman who won the sector with 15 kilo. So that's three pegs to my left. There's a bit of a parking thing down there. I think I've got to let the other anglers go down there first and I'm the last car in. But uh, yeah, interestingly, Will caught four of his fish down the middle, which I never put that line in yesterday. So I think I'm going to be doing that today. I can't avoid it, so. And then it could just be tricky getting across with the trees and stuff, but I've got to go across regardless, even if it means I'm going to lose some kit. So I'm going to get down to the bag and uh, have a look what's waiting for me. quite high up here, finally got my station in place, it's a bit windier up here, I've had to put the sticks up here, purely because there's no room down here, it's a little bit tight, I've got some nice little steps to go down, it's a step peg, if this was Southfield this would be a flyer. See how high, high up I am off the water. That's a doctor. The feeder, the feeder rest a bit, a little bit unorthodox, but it'll do the job. That's purely because I'm being able to bring all my kit with me. Usually I'd have the longer feeder arm, but obviously I couldn't bring it. The five and a half meter landing at handle is going to come in handy again. Hopefully I'm going to be needing it, but obviously with it being longer, it helps with it being so high off the water. Four meter river net as well. I'll straighten that out a little bit further, just so there's more water in the bottom of it. Yeah, it's going to be simpler. Yeah, it's going to be a simple approach, I think. I've got some sticky mag here. got some normal maggots for the hook. I've got some corn, obviously. I've got a bit of pro-natural dark mixed up as well. I just want wetting down again. It's dried out a little bit. Yeah, same as the same approach as yesterday, I think, other than I'm definitely going to feed down the middle today. Will Freeman was one, two, three pegs or four pegs to my left, going down towards the bridge. He won this sector, but like I say, he caught, I think it was four fish down the middle. Um, so I've got to put that line in, I've got to put that line in. I don't know whether to put that 13 meter line in again or not. I don't know, I want to make that decision in the next half hour or so when I get, I'm going to start clipping up and stuff. It looks a little bit messy across there. Looks about the same sort of range, 40 meters. The lad next to me has just been casting out. He's been bringing all sorts back. As you can see, there's all sorts overhanging. There is a gap here just in front of me where it looks, obviously it's a cleaner wall, but obviously we don't know what it's like underneath the water. There are a few sticks and stuff going into the water there. He's just dragged some branches out from over there, so I think it's gonna be messy, but I've got a feeling I'm gonna to have to go into it just to get bites. But that's what it is. I've got plenty of spare up lens. I did a load last night, got plenty of spare feeders. That's what this venue is. You've got to be prepared to, to go into those areas just to get fish and you've got to just, it's a collateral damage thing. You've got to, you've got to expect to lose a bit of kit, you know, which I don't mind doing if I'm coming back with fish. Yesterday there was some lads in, in B sector, which is the other side of the bridge where I was yesterday, there were lads going across into those areas and losing kit, but they weren't coming back with fish, they weren't even getting bites, so that's obviously not the ideal scenario, but yeah, got a bit of sunshine on us now. I'm down out of the wind. Dad's in the car, it's like an oven. <laughs> it's like an oven in there, he's got some Coca-Cola, water, he's got chocolate chip cookies, he's got the sun on him. I think it's the first time he's been really warm since he got here, so hopefully he's gonna be seeing plenty of action.
40 minutes in, I haven't had a sign. This wind's just changed direction slightly. It was coming over my back. It's now coming left to right now. It's really making casting a bit difficult, but I've only seen one fish caught and another one has just been hooked. I've had Lee Kerry, who's two from the end in the other section, the other side of the bridge where I was yesterday, has got two fish apparently. Peg one in this zone, next to the bridge, white t-shirt, he's got one, I've seen him catch one lump. As you can see that wind's coming more across now. But the guy, one, two, three down, is just playing one now. Not sure who, who that is. I'm not sure what line he's got it on either. But I'll obviously watch when he casts back in. So I'm still fishing long, I'm fishing across. I've only got that other line in down the middle at 25 metres. Put quite a bit of cord in on that line. I said I'd give this long line an hour and just see what happens. And then I might have a chuck down the middle. And it's a turtle. Had a bite, shame he can't weigh it in. <laughs> Still no more fish to report other than peg one. Peg one, we are an hour and ten minutes in. Peg one, I've seen catch another fish, so he's definitely got two, he might have more. That's the guy next to the bridge. That's it, I haven't seen any more fish caught. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven pegs here where nobody's had a fish yet, and I don't think anyone's had a bite. I've just had two casts down the middle. Still sat down the middle now, just being patient on that line and I've not had a sign on it yet. Probably just have one more cast on it and then I'm, I'm going to go long again. So all I can do rotate lines, just try and find a fish. Well, you know you can rely on my videos for plenty of action, can't you? Coming up to two hours in, I've not had a bite, I've not had a sign, I've not had a liner, I've had no rattles from bleak or anything like I did yesterday. I was, yesterday I was only about 20 pegs that way. Can't believe it. Quick rundown for you. Peg one, the wind's going to blow on here, but it keeps coming and going the wind. Peg one, kid in the white t shirt's got two fish. And then from pegs two, right the way through to seven, which was this guy on my right. No one's had a bite. No one's had a sign or anything. Peg eight's just landed a fish. Peg nine's got one. Peg ten's got one. The next angler's got one. And then the lad right on the end peg, he's got one. So admittedly, I'm way down the section, but only by a fish or two. Anyway, it looks like there's only two fish winning the section at the moment, two hours in. The only thing I can tell you is I've had a, probably 20 minutes fishing down the middle, not had a sign. And the only thing, other thing I've spotted is that every single fish that has been caught in this section, because I'm in the middle of this bend here, right in the middle of the section again, I can see every angler. The one thing I do know is that every fish that's been caught has been caught right across under that other bank. As you can see, the wind keeps dropping and getting up again, making it difficult. It's not too bad at the moment. A lot of lads are having a lot of downtime. They're getting their crack offs and they're getting snagged up over there as well because of the wind it's throwing them off and they're going into the into the bushes and the, the overhangs as well so there's a lot of time being spent just setting up but if that's where the fish are the lads have got to go across there so I haven't had any problems touch wood yet because um, there's nothing out there it's just a wall I keep getting picked up on rocks or whatever they are as I've come to bring the feeder out but I've not lost any kit so all I can do is just stay on that long line for a bit longer just like I said, the only fish that have been caught have been on that line, so I've got to give it more time. It's looking a bit grim and a bit desperate at the moment. Well, we're banged on two and a half hours in, and I still haven't had a sign, I haven't had a bite. But as I'm talking to you, peg four and peg three have both just hooked a fish right out of the blue. I know peg four has hooked his down the middle, because I've been watching him. Not sure about peg three. And they're both carp as well. How about that? Out of the blue, both of them into fish. Let's hope someone's going to switch on. It's been a very, very rubbish two and a half hours.
45 minutes to go and I've just had the first fish, first bite, gone further across, gone right literally into the rocks, been in about 5 minutes but I finally just picked one up, it's about, might be 2 kilo, that'll keep me up with most of the people that have got one obviously but another fish now would really make a massive difference now, I've avoided the blank, that's the main thing, I've gone right into the rocks, it's 45 minutes left, I need one more. tomorrow 25 minutes to go I've just had a second fish next cast it's been in about five minutes again same line right up against the rocks really confident bite it snagged me up I had to drag it drag it out of weed or whatever it is that's out there thankfully it came through tried to do me on the rocks close in it's another good fish two kilo maybe might be a little bit more I'm not sure 30 minutes left Hopefully, there'll be some more on the way. to go I honestly thought another one of these was on its way this was the second one of the biggest they both weighed five kilo 100 this is one I had to drag out of that snag on the other bank beautiful fish you can tell how wild they are over the moon to get them to be honest 46 minutes of the match remaining I would have taken a bleak <clears throat> well, that third fish didn't come I really thought it was gonna but it's, it's cost me a lot of points as well but with 46 minutes to go I would have taken anything on 45 minutes I've had two fish and two chucks whether they just passed through the peg or not I don't know so I've ended up sixth out of the 13 in this zone but just 200 grams would have got me fourth which shows how tight it's been you know and when you get beat like that for two points with 200 grams and you've gone four hours and 15 minutes without a bite it really annoying there's been a 14 kilo second second from end peg down to my right the end pegs beat me as well which is what they predicted and that end pegs beat me as well and I think peg three as well has had an eight kilo that's it that third fish would have made a massive difference but I think I really need to just kind of just look at why I've gone four hours and 15 minutes without a bite I think I mean I've gone tighter across later on into an area where you expect to lose your kit on every cast 
maybe I should have done that for the full match. I have gone really tight across, but that last last hour, hour and a quarter, I've literally almost been hitting the rocks with the feeder. And the lad's to my right, he's had one fish on my right, next one down's had one fish. The lad on my left has blanked, so has it been a, a really rubbish area? I don't know. And these lads have been casting tight there all day, you know, they've lost loads of kit trying to get tight in there right from the off. They spent, I bet they spent a third of the match, well, him on my left has, just setting up, setting kit up and wrestling with a tree on the other bank. But that's it, not a bite down the middle. So that's one more day to go, but that's me, I'm, I'm out of contention now, that puts me on 10 points, there's no way I can win it now, but you never know, I might draw an MPEG tomorrow, which is the final day, and have a really good weight and win some money back that way and, and just have a bit of a bit of a good finish to, to the contest but I'm going to get packed up now and get back to the hotel and find out how the other lads have gone on from what we hear it's fished hard everywhere whether that's ended up like that at the end I don't know but I'm going to get packed up and get back to the hotel very disappointed good morning I'm losing my voice the air conditioning's got me again it's the final morning the final day it's half past six we're just about to have breakfast upstairs the results are up going in to this final day amazingly yesterday because there were so many high scoring um, weights to be honest there were some anglers that were leading the competition really had bad days yesterday I think that's a strong reflection on how it's actually fishing I actually went up two places believe it or not I was 15th just uh, on the same number of points as Lee Kerry yesterday but Lee was obviously he, he'd got more weight than me he was on eight kilo Lee had a fantastic day yesterday the results are here, these have been going up every single night, so if you ever fish this competition it's brilliant to see that these results, I think they've been up by about before 8 o'clock every single night, so you can actually go through everything, scrutinise everything if you want to do that. Um, the leader going into today, Antonio Barbaran, I think he won the competition last year, he's on two section wins, he obviously knows something, he's obviously got the venue sorted. But he's on, um, he's first with two points. And then going down the top ten, you probably won't be able to read it on here properly. I'll try and put it on as a PDF for you, so that you can look at it properly, because I know some of you will scrutinise it. Our English interest, we've got good old Will Freeman. He's on three points, he had a fantastic day yesterday. Again, always does well in this competition. Fifth place is now Lee Kerry, he's on six points. Mr Pickering himself on seven points. And then we've got Joe Wilden who's come over with his dad Steve. It's been great to see Joe over. He's actually drawn D section, which has been a deep, uh, you know, a hard area. He's drawn that both days, and he actually practiced there on the Thursday as well. So he's obviously been off to two familiar sectors, but he's done the business there both times. He's actually on nine points, and then there's myself in thirteenth, just at the bottom of the first page, on ten points. It's a fifty angler competition. The fiftieth angler is on twenty-four points. I'll not go through them all for you, but so I'm in 13th place. I'm actually paying out the top 15 in this competition, which I think is really, really good. Um, and 15th place is 11 points. But just to put it in perspective, like I say, 5th place, top 5 if you're interested in that. Top 5 is Lee Kerry on 6 points, and then in 15th is 11 points. So there's not a massive, massive margin there. So I'm going to go upstairs, have a couple of coffees, wake up a little bit, and um, just kind of hope for a good day I don't think it's as windy as what it was yesterday but yeah it's uh, obviously I want a peg I'd love to win the section I don't know if you can do that from every peg I get the impression that it is quite possible to be honest there are a lot of pegs it's not only being dominated by end pegs so even when I draw I don't really know what to expect which is great so we get some breakfast and I'll see you down on the bank well it's half past seven just arriving at the draw as you can see flat calm today no wind at all this is the match fishing length that I've shown you before. No idea what to expect from the draw from what we've seen the last two days. Obviously, M Peg did fancy, but to be fair, you know, after a section win. And some of the sections have been won from virtually any peg, so that's exactly what we want. So, whatever a draw, I'm just going to be going confident, and uh, hopefully, there's going to be a few fish there to give me a chance of winning that section. Well, the sun's out, so I thought I'd better film this now just to show you that it does actually uh, shine in Spain. I've drawn D2, I haven't fished D section yet. I think the leader of the competition's on D3. I'm not 100% sure, so that'll be interesting. D2, my peg, what I've, I'm on now, actually blank yesterday, but I don't think that means anything. I'm just not even gonna think about it. It's the second peg in, I'm assuming from a split. So it's second to end peg on paper. Hopefully that's what it is. I don't care about yesterday's result. I'm just gonna get my head down. I just 
just just attack it, just do what I did yesterday, and uh, and try and get that section win. Well, I've lost two complete setups. Just casting the bomb across under out of the bank, it's an absolutely, it's horrible. There's dead trees in there. I can't really show you on this GoPro camera. I wish I got proper camera so I could zoom in on it for you. There's like a, an old dead tree in there, which looks very messy. That's virtually, virtually in front of me, slightly to my left. So the only hole I can probably fish is, see the edge of the big rocks on the right hand side? I'm, it seems to be the clearest point. I've gone over to that side of the, of the tree that's in the water. I just can't find a very clear spot, so I've just had to pick, you know, the best one available. There's some line as well coming back off that tree. Twice I've been reeling in and I've felt this line and, it, and it's, it's locked me up about halfway across the river. So obviously people have been getting caught over there over the last few days and it obviously leaves line and stuff. So. I think I've just got to expect I'm going to lose some kit today. I just hope it's going to give me a chance of catching some fish. I've got all spare feeders with me by the side of me. All my links, spare swivels and everything on my tray ready to go. And obviously plenty of hook lens. Two line approach, I'm going to go right across. I'm not going to go as tight as possible to start with, but I've just I've got a feeling it's going to be messy wherever I go across there on the other bank. And I'm ignoring the middle today. I've put a line in at 13 metres. Which is what I caught on on day one, and I lost a big fish on there as well. So I haven't seen anyone else catch on that, but I'm going to do it just purely because my confidence in that middle line is just kind of gone. I've not seen fish caught on it, and that's it. Usual setup, obviously, same kit. Um, got the casting mat up today. Just got that tie wrapped. That'll obviously stop my hook length and stuff getting caught in in the uh, in the grass and stuff. 50 centimeter hook length, and obviously, to get out there, you've got to drop your rod quite a bit. Got to adapt your cast slightly it's more of a you kind of casting from here rather than here so obviously that's why the casting mat helps but that's it same bait maggot ca uh, maggot corn i've got a bit of ground bait mixed up just to might trigger a bite who knows um that's it ready to go pre baiting 10 minutes well yeah as, as suspected the lad on the next peg on d3 which is that way is the lad who's on two points he's had two section wins and he actually won competition last year as well so I don't need to point out the obvious he obviously knows what he's doing and um, apparently he knows every peg on here he knows where all the uh, where the snags are and, and all that sort of stuff where the clear patches are which obviously helps but he's from Valencia so he obviously knows the venue so it's gonna be interesting I mean I've got a feeling he's gonna fish it slightly different from me so it'd be interesting to see how our approaches kind of compare um, I'm obviously gonna get a chance to see how he fishes it so that'll stand me in good stead and you know, I'm going to try and do my my thing the best I possibly can. I know snag is going to be a problem. I've got to expect to lose some kit, and if I do a hook anything, I've just got to make sure I've got the right gear on, like yesterday. So if I do get anything snagged, or I've got to put some pressure on the fish to stop it or try and steer it away from anything, then I've got the kit on to do it. I've got nothing to lose. I'm in 13th place, 10 points, paying out the top 15. So yeah, I want to win my section. I'm just going to go for it. That's it. Five minutes to pre baiting. In. 15 minutes in, and I haven't had an indication yet. Let it next peg. He actually pulled out a one first cast. He's just gone in again. He had a quick cast. I don't know if he had a bite on that one, and then he's obviously up this one now on his third cast. Not massive fish, but them smaller carp, you know, the one and a half to one and a half kilo size fish, they're uh, 
really fight. Brilliant start for him, and he's caught that right across. Forty minutes in, I haven't had a sign, I haven't had a bite. Lad on my left on the MPEG. I think, I think this is his fourth that he's playing now, but he's lost either four or five. I think he's lost more than he's actually landed. He's the only one catching anything. I haven't had a sign. I've noticed he's caught one to him a little bit short from that other bank. So I've obviously had a couple of drops there, but not had anything. I've gone back across now, right tight across. Lad on my right. He's um, he's not caught yet. He's obviously winning the competition. He's the lad that won it last year, and as you can imagine, it's the final day of the competition is attracting quite a bit of attention. And he's put short line in like me at 30 metres, and I'm sure all that skyline is not going to help him. He's had loads of people stood behind him already. I'm sure that's not going to help. But he's been in the tree a couple of times. But it's difficult with these overhangs. So yeah, I mean, this lad on peg one is <clears throat> he's fishing his own match basically, he's on his own. I haven't had a sign yet, like I said, so I'm just going to carry on across and hope one or two of these fish are just going to move down. Funny anymore. There's an hour and 50 minutes left. I haven't had a sign. I haven't had a line and nothing. Lad on my right, he's managed to get one. It's not a big fish, but he's got one. Obviously, he's over the moon with that. To go with his two points, that should get him good points in this hard section if it stays like this. Lad on my left, he's got about six or seven. He's not caught one for ages. He's lost about five or six. Um, I just haven't had a sign. We're incredibly fortunate at this stage to get one at all. I think I need at least two for decent points. It feels like a complete lottery at the minute. I don't feel like I've got any control over it. I've just got to stick to what I'm doing and hopefully I'll get one. Forty minutes left. I've just had one out of the blue. 
didn't really pull rod in or anything, but it was just obvious the fish was on just, just out of the blue. In the same place, I've cast two or 15, 15 other times. 40 minutes left, just got that one. It caused me quite a bit of problems trying to get in the net because all this weed in front of me. I managed to pull it through one patch of weed. Thankfully, that longer landing net handle let me scoop it. A bit nerve wracking, I've got to admit, needed that fish. I'm not quite sure if it's going to make any difference in the overall standings. But obviously, you want to avoid a blank. 35 minutes left now. I'm going to stick on that same hole where I've just caught that and try and snare another one. Done. Well, I was relieved to catch at the finish, I've got to be totally honest, but he's weighed 12 kilos on the end. Um, I don't know how many fish he's had, seven I think, or eight fish, but he's lost more than that. Glad I'm alright, he's had one fish, that's the guy that's winning the competition. Going into today, he's beat me by um, 300 grams with his one fish, and the next guy along has had one fish and he's beat me by 16 grams. It looks like it's... Uh, <laughs> it's not my year. Daniel, come and say hello, come on. He's been a top man, this is Daniel. One of our subscribers, obviously. Come on, what has it been today? It's been difficult everywhere. You've been walking the bank, haven't you? Really difficult in every sector, in every zone. Uh, you have to fight hard to catch only a, a single fish. So. Yeah, it's been difficult all the way through, all hasn't it? Through. All the way. There's been three, a lot, lot. three carbs, two carbs. There's been lots of lost fish as well, hasn't uh, there? A lot of, <clears throat> a lot of fish uh, is lost in the snacks. That's the difficult thing. You've got to, you've got to make your mind up where you're going to fish. You've got to fish where you think the fish are, and you are literally fishing for one or two bites. But obviously, it's all right getting a bite. You've then got to hook it, but then you've also got to land it as well. That's why we're fishing with thicker, and stronger gear, and sometimes that might go against you actually getting a bite. You know, so. Anyway, I'm going to pack all my tackle away now. <laughs> the worst part of fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Oh well, it's going to be a whole year before we can come back and do it again. Okay. Let's get packed up and get back to the hotel. I've just been asked three times if I'd fish this again next year. I thought I'd just tell you now how I feel about it. Yeah, fantastic competition, absolutely brilliant. So well organised. I can't believe how friendly everyone is. The organisation's fantastic, they're ready to weigh in virtually straight away, straight after the match. And the results have been up on the board by half past seven every night in the hotel. Most of the people that fish the competition stay in the same hotel as well, so yeah, I'd love to fish it. The only downside has just really been the way that it's fished, but that's fishing, you know. The weather can be different next year, it could fish completely different, so if the calendar allows, yes, I'll definitely be back next year. That's all the kit packed away. It's taken me about an hour just to get it back into its flight luggage. Get out all that kit you've seen me on the bank with. Three bags, two bags and a bazooka. That's it, done with for this year. I'm gonna head upstairs now, have a shower, and just get ready for a presentation. Looks like Lee Kerry and Will Freeman have done really well. Could be second and third overall, let's hope so. That's it, shower time. And a couple of beers, I think, and then just sort out plans for getting back to the airport first thing in the morning.
seven o'clock in the morning. The sun's just coming up. We've had a bit of rain through the night, so the roads are wet, but that's it, back to England now. We're flying on the 11 o'clock in the morning flight, so we're leaving nice and early, because it's Monday morning, so we don't obviously want to get stuck in traffic. The great thing about this venue is, whilst it's 95 miles from Alicante Airport, which is the one we chose to fly from, 75 miles of that is just one road, it's one of the toll roads, which are fantastic, you know, it only cost us, we came in on that same road as well, and I think it was only about 12 or 14 euros for that whole journey, where you just put it into fifth or sixth gear, as this car's uh, concerned, and you know, you're there in no time, so that's it, like I say, still plenty of clouds around, we've missed the rain, back to England, we've heard there's plenty of snow and bad weather back there, but um, hopefully our flight's going to be on time, and hopefully EasyJet are going to um, keep us attached to our luggage this time. So yeah, it's been a fantastic trip, strongly recommend it for anyone who's interested, and if not, just comment below, and if I can help out in any way with any information about this sort of event, please comment below and I'll do my best to help you out, so definitely, certainly would love to be back here again next year.